Hello everyone and welcome, welcome to another episode of Homain TV. Today we're going to uh, explore Dorico's play mode and its features. So without further ado, let's go. So in order to access play mode, all you got to do is to go to this play tab here and click on it. Or you can use uh, the shortcut control and four or command four on Mac. And then you have a bunch of uh, columns here. So you have this left one, which is more about the VSTs, the track inspector and uh, other stuff about your instruments. Then you have your tracks. It's a bit similar to a uh, digital audio workstation or a DAW, for example, like Cubase. And, uh, and down here you have your mixer. And if you click on this button, it will give you the key editor, which we will gradually explore everything together but for today i'm going to talk about the track inspector and uh, vsd and midi so let's start from uh, a little bit above here you see flow uh, well you know the flows in uh, dorico already it's just like your movements or parts that you have already and if you click on it you can find your other uh, flows here and as you can see the score is changing here and I'm going to click on down above again because that's where we're going to work. And then when you come down, you have two tabs here. You have Track Inspector and VSD and MIDI. So Track Inspector, it basically shows you the routing, insert and effects and channel of each individual instrument that you have in your score. So for example, if I change it to Violin 2, you see it changed here so it was it's now note performer and so on and so on the rest are just note performer and this one is disabled which i will explain later why so let's go back uh, i'm going to click on this violin here and check the routing here if you click on this drop down you see a list of instruments that are available for you to choose for example, uh, I mostly use Note Performer for my scores, but you can also use Haley and Sonic. And, uh, and you might think, hey, I added some uh, VSD libraries or some other stuff or a synthesizer or whatever that you want to uh, have in your score. And for that, in order to bring it, you have to go to VSD and MIDI here. And you need to click on this plus here and then the drop down, and finally find the instrument that you want. For example, you go to native instruments, I can add a contact or any synth that I want, and just click on it and it will be available to use. And it's in the background of the screen. I'm gonna try to see, yeah, for some reason it's not coming on top, let's see, yeah. I press the E here, it's very similar to Cubase. So if you press the E, it just brings the uh, information uh, about the synthesizer. It's just the uh, interface of the synthesizer. So I'm gonna close this now. And if you press the this one, this is the endpoint setup, which you can make uh, certain assignments for different ports and channels in your instrument, which this is a bit in depth. We're not gonna go through this now. Um, and uh, down here works if you have uh, external MIDI. So for example, if you have an external synthesizer and you have an external MIDI device, you can use this MIDI instrument here to uh, route uh, an external MIDI instrument or effect or whatever you want to operate from inside of Dorico. And um, now let's go back. Now you see I added an FM8 here. Now let's see, if I press here, you're going to see that FM8 is now also available to choose. And again, if I press this FM8, you have the same options here. You have the endpoint setup and the E to edit your instrument. And to the left of this, you have ports and channels. And what it does is that it gives each instrument independent playback of each voice. Otherwise, if you put a, a dynamic for any uh, pitches in your score, even if it's up stem or down stem or different voices, all it's going to obey uh, the, uh, the dynamics that is written on it. Okay, so just one. But if you enable independent voice playback, so for example, look at this violin one, I'm going to press 
enable independent voice playback. And you see, now I have two. Um, and I mean, this is a violin, so if it was a piano or something, it would make more sense. Uh, but but you, you get my point. I mean, you, you have now this one. And the fun thing is that you can also give the second voice another um, another routing, you know, so it's actually uh, can be handy for contemporary music or making backing tracks or stuff like that. Uh, for example, you don't need to have four uh, staffs to make um, something complicated with the sounds, with the VSTs. You can use it just only a piano staff, so two staffs, and each voice having its individual um, VST or sound here. So for example, in a piano, one can be, uh, in a piano staff, one can be a violin, cello, xylophone, whatever in one staff. And you might ask, okay, where are the other voices? And whatever you add voice in your score in write mode, you will get them also here. So they will be added here, no worries. The other thing is that you might say, hey, uh, well, how can I get rid of these? Because if you press here, you can, uh, again, disable the independent voice playback, which I'm going to do now. As you can see, it's still here. Uh, don't worry, this is a bit, uh, I think it's still a bit underdeveloped. But what you can do, what I tried is that if you just save it, well, I did last time it worked. Yeah, so if you save your uh, project or just close it and open it again, it will go back to the way it was before, you know, it will just disable that. So it's good to know that your Dorico is not broken, it's just not there yet. Now let's go a little bit down here. Uh, we have the insert effects and these are similar to any effect that you uh, add, for example, in your DAWs or digital audio workstations. For example, I say, hey, I want my violin to uh, go through my guitar rig or FM8 FX or whatever FX that I have. And uh, let me show you. Okay, now it's going into my FM8. And again, this E it brings the instrument or the effects and you can just modify it uh, the, the way you want. Okay, and you have four of these guys here. And if you go a little bit down, you have the channel settings. And uh, what these, it's, it's, and uh, it, this is quite similar to uh, channel settings of a mixer that you have in a DAW or an analog system. There's just a fader here, and uh, you have your mute and solo here, which as you can see, it's lighting up everywhere here. It's the same. And you have also a pan setting here, which is good to know. And you can also use this, I guess. Well, I never tried it. Yeah. Well, if you just double click on it, it just goes to zero. That was it for this uh, tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it. Next time, I'm going to talk about uh, this section and the section below. And then finally, in the third video in this series, I'm going to talk about the piano roll, which is quite handy and uh, useful when making uh, projects. And I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Till next time, Homayun out.